Hello and welcome to a new video about the electric field. Today we want to find out how much force is produced by two point shaped charges to each other. I will briefly explain what I try to, to figure out. We have one, we have somewhere one charge, we have somewhere another charge. So here is the charge Q. Here's the charge Q2. And those charges, they have a distance from each other. And I will name the distance due to whatever reason R. Alright? So we have two charges in a distance of R. And we want to know how big is the force. Therefore, we're going to going to calculate the electric field of charge number one at the place of charge number two. So, actually, if we think about a closed surface, evenly shaped around this point here, it would be a sphere. There's a sphere with a certain area. And the area of the sphere, I call it AS, so sphere, sphere. 4 pi, and now r squared. Hey, luckily I named this r, right? Because it's the radius of a sphere. So that's, that's the, 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 the area of a surrounding sphere of a closed hull around this. And last video we talked about Gauss law. Yeah? And we said, okay, let's think about this closed surface. What is what electric flux, and I'm again using the, the usual way in the German-speaking countries, so with the, with the symbols and so on, uh, because I think it's easier, easier approach. Uh, what flux, electric flux, is passing through this closed hull? Uh, so we have our flux, Psi. C1, no? and this is Q1. This is the flux because contained is only Q1. Let's say we are we are briefly just just outside. Yeah? Q2, Q2 is just outside this hull. Yeah? Q1. So that's C. So what is now the flux density? The flux density D equals the flux divided by the area AS. So actually, what we figure out, it's Q1 divided by 4 pi r squared. That's the flux density there. And we said, how, how, what is the electrical field? Oh, I forgot the indexes. D1, E1. E1 is the flux density divided by epsilon zero. If this is empty space. We talked about this. This this D is E multiplied by epsilon. Yeah? So this is so no, no, let's see. Let's see what is the result of this. What is the result of this? So we have D1, this is Q1 divided by 4 pi r squared divided by epsilon zero. Now let's get rid of this double fraction here. Q divided by, Q1 of course, divided by 4 pi r squared multiplied by epsilon zero. 
That's electric field. And the electric field is here. It's pointing in this direction. This is E1. Alright? Because if this charge is positive, E1 will go in this direction. If this charge is negative, then we have here minus and E1 will go in this direction. Alright? And so what is the force? Now we calculate the force. Here we have a force. Because we have now electric field, we have a charge, so there must be a force starting from caused by charge number one and acting on charge number two. What is this force F12? This is the electric field multiplied by the charge where it is exposed to this electric, electric field. And now, let's see what is the result of all this. Look at that. So that's Q1 multiplied by Q2 divided by 4 pi r squared epsilon zero. All right. So this charge is causing this force on this charge. It's going in this direction. If one of the charges is negative, yeah, you see the force is turning its direction. That's typical. If both are negative, then it's again away. Yeah? So if they are the same, the same sign, yeah, positive charges or negative charges, equally named charges, then they will distract each other. Wait, 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 go away. If they are positive and negative, yeah, unlike names, then they will attract each other. This just came out of this. Yeah? And now let's think about what type of force the this this is also force. Yeah? There's also a force because here is a charge and this will act here. So here we have also a sphere. With the same area because it's actually it's the same sphere but displaced. Yeah? The middle the middle point of the sphere is somewhere else. So uh, actually it stays the same. However, now Ps2. Hmm? Ps2. The electric flux through this hull. Let's say Q1 is just just outside this hull. Yeah? And this time it's not. Q1, it's the only thing contained is Q2. So what is D2? D2 equals Ps2 divided by As. It's the same area. Yeah? So we have actually Q2 divided by 4 pi r squared. And now the electric field working in this direction. This is E2. Huh? Electric field 2 equals D2. And the area has still the same property. Property. Still the same things are working there. The same uh, physical laws. D2 divided by epsilon zero. And now we are going to insert this. Uh, going to put this term into. So we have here Q2 divided by 4 pi r squared. And then divided by epsilon zero. Still all the same. Now get rid again of the double fraction. Now we have here a Q2 divided by, and then this 4 pi r squared multiplied by epsilon zero. Now we are calculating the force here. The force originated by charge 2, we're acting on charge 1, so this is the name, F21 equals, and now it's E2 multiplied by Q1. And look at that. 
the result is the same. It's Q2 multiplied by Q1. The order does not really matter. Yeah? 4 pi r squared multiplied epsilon 0. Those two are the same. Okay? So actually, we are calculating the forces of two point shaped charges to each other in a distance of r is f12 equals f21 and this equals q1 multiplied by q2 divided the two charges 4 pi epsilon 0 r squared r is the distance this is our finding and this was first found out by somebody called Coulomb. Now we are finally at Mr. Coulomb. This is why we call this nowadays Coulomb's law. And now we see we get to it eh, just by using it was just used uh, the, the uh, Gauss, Gauss law, huh? application of Gauss law. You could also come the other way around and say, okay, that's the Bayes law, and then the Gauss law will follow. Huh? From, from my point of view, this is now the more logical approach. Right? Coulomb's law, yeah. describing behavior things matter. Huh? It's pretty equal, by the way, it's pretty equal to, to gravitation. Uh, gravitation, there are other constants inside, but pretty much it's, it's, it's not charges, it's masses there, and there are other constants, but uh, somehow it's logical also, yeah? because there is one piece of mass, this point shape there, and then and, and we have spheres around this, and it's pretty much the same principle. Coulomb's now. Law. Huh? Now we know why the unit for the charge is Coulomb, because he really experimented with this. Next time we're going to discuss or show you how we can draw or picturize electric fields. Uh, we'll talk about things uh, potential areas and so oh, there are some names uh, inside there <sighs> sounds already pretty <laughs> pretty complicated but you will see it's not that that hard yeah so next time display of electric fields for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye